Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Long time no see. I am back today with a Sephora haul. It's a pretty large Sephora haul. The Sephora sale just ended recently and I just got my final package. Of course, there's a ton of orders during the sale, so the shipping does get delayed, especially if you make orders towards the end of the sale. So I have all of my packages. I have a lot to share with you. Some of the products I've tried, some of them I haven't, but I'll give you my initial impressions on the products that I have tried. Of course, I will link everything that I show today down below in my description box, as well as the makeup I'm wearing right now. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. And if you like Sephora hauls, give this video a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get into it. Before we get into the haul, I did wanna say thank you to Rakuten for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I always love working with them because I use them every time I shop online. Rakuten is the largest cashback website that partners with over 3,500 retailers you know and love, Sephora, Ulta, StubHub, Urban Outfitters, literally anything you can think of, they give you cashback, coupon codes, and everything for free just for shopping like you were already gonna do. You just go to rakuten.com, type in the retail, click shop now and it will take you to regular shopping whether it's on the app or it's on a browser and you just get cash back you just sign up to Rakuten which is completely free I will have a link at the top of my description box and you get a $40 welcome bonus when you make your first qualifying purchase which is incredible along with that there also is a huge promo going on where a ton of retailers I'm talking hundreds have 15% cash back right now some that stand out to me are L Fenty, also Urban Outfitters. I shop a lot there, so I will leave my favorites down below, but you can also go to the website to check out all the retailers, and that will be running from May 8th to May 15th. So 15% cash back is huge. It's called their Big Give Week. So I will have the link at the top of my description box to sign up. Just highly recommend. I've been using Rakuten for literally years, and I always check it before I make an order online. So all the information will be down below to sign up. Thank you again to Rakuten for sponsoring this portion of today's video and let's go ahead and jump into what I got from Sephora. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with one of the newest drops, which is the Sol de Janeiro Limited Edition Fragrance Mist. So I went ahead and grabbed all three right when they launched, and my shipping for once was actually fast. I was in shock. So I did a short form video on my first impression on these, but I know a lot of you don't like or watch short form, so I'm here to give you my thoughts on these. So let's start off with Bikini Season. This one is supposed to be a sunlit orchid and guava nectar. This one to me is the most beachy coconut. It definitely is that typical sort of like sunscreen sweet nectar with coconut twist. These are not going to last all day, but I will say, and I've heard this as well, if you put this in your hair, it tends to last a lot longer. But if you like a juicy nectar coconut scent that's almost like sunscreen, really beachy, I think you would like Bikini Season. Next up is Do Not Disturb. Now this one is interesting because it does have linen. It says mimosa flower, nude musk, but it also has fresh linens, soft vanilla. So when you initially spray this, it actually, now that I'm smelling it, because again, when I first smelled these, I was kind of smelling all of them at night and I was like trying to decide which one reminded me of what. This one gives me a little bit of like a Ariana Grande cloud when you smell it in the bottle. But when you spray this, initially you get that linen, very fresh, almost like laundry soap. And then when it sets down, it does become more vanilla and musky. So this is definitely more of the fresh scent, but when it does set down, it does become more of a skin scent. So it's very light. You're going to have to reapply this one probably the most out of all three, but I do like all three, they're just different. And then my favorite has to be When in Rio. So this one is Wild Bergamot Vanilla Amber. This one is floral, very sweet, but it has a little bit of a sultry feel. If you were going to choose one of the three that is the most, I guess, nighttime appropriate, it would be this one, but overall they're all three very sweet, very just like light for summer, which I think 
is honestly perfect. I like this set more than last year's because last year's I felt like was a little too patchouli for me and it kind of gave me a headache. This one is also the strongest of the three. If I had to rank them, I like when in Rio and then I like bikini, is it called bikini season? And then I like do not disturb. But I think honestly all three smell nice if you're not too picky and you just like fruity sweet scents for summer. All right, next let's talk about the blushes I picked up and I'm wearing right now. So Giorgio Armani came out with these Luminous Silk blushes and I was so excited. I'm actually wearing the Luminous Silk foundation right now and I really just thought this would be a beautiful formula. So I originally bought the baby pink and then the orange like coral and for some reason I got an email saying that the coral was out of stock. They had to take it off my order. So I was a little confused by that, but as time went on, I just waited and didn't reorder it, and then I ended up being influenced and ordering a different shade. So it's kind of confusing, but I did still end up with two. So the first one I got is the really pretty baby pink. This one is the shade 52, so I'm wearing it right now, and I like that it's not too light. It's not one of those pinks that I feel like can look ashy or super powdery, this is a more buildable formula, so it's one of those that you can really kind of get in there with your brush and build it up, but it's not like hard pan or anything like that. And then I wasn't gonna get this, but I kept seeing people use it and look so beautiful. This is the shade 50. So this one definitely has like noticeable glitter or shimmer. I don't wanna say glitter, but it is glowy. It really does remind me of NARS Orgasm, which I feel like We've had enough of that, but because it's a different formula and after seeing reviews, it just looked stunning. So today I'm wearing both of these and I have to say I really enjoy both. This one definitely has a glow, but I don't find that it enhances my texture because I really kind of am picky about that. When you do rub it in, it's like a beautiful light peach, but then it has this like gold reflect and I just think it's gorgeous. Like it has enough pigment to it that it doesn't look like a highlighter or something unflattering. And then the baby pink is really beautiful too. But see how it's not like overly pigmented? So I feel like it's really a nice formula if you don't like a heavy blush or if you like the ability to just kind of rub your brush in and build it up instead of having to be careful because a lot of times the blushes that are coming out recently are just crazy pigmented. So I am really happy with both of these and now I'm kind of like do I need the orange one I mean I know I don't need it but because I do really love the formula of these I'm kind of wanting the orange one now so out of nowhere Beauty Blender dropped two new complexion products and I was super intrigued so I immediately grabbed both so these are the Beauty Blender Boost firming and smoothing peptide primer and the four-in-one firming peptide setting spray so let me tell you my thoughts because I've used these a couple times. I feel like I really don't know how I feel about this one yet. It says plumps and restores with peptides, smooths and grips makeup, hydrates and nourishes. Wait a minute, okay, hold on because I actually haven't used it this way. Directions, using a damp beauty blender, dab over clean skin before makeup. Okay, I've never applied a primer like that, but it does have this little tip applicator. And then when it comes out, it looks sort of like a gel primer and it doesn't feel dry at all, but I don't know. There's sort of like a little bit of a glow in there. It's really subtle, so it's not like a matte type of primer, but it's not super illuminating like let's say the Rare Beauty, but you see how it gives you like that hydration. My one complaint that I've noticed is it's heavily fragranced, which I don't know why. It's not anything that like irritates or burns my skin, but it definitely has a heavy like fruity scent, which is sort of strange, but I'm a little bit perplexed by this one. I have used it a few times and I just didn't really notice anything. Like I didn't notice bad, I didn't notice good, I didn't notice smoothing, I didn't notice glow, so I'm kind of trying to figure out 
uh, how to use this or really if it's just kind of like skincare over time. And I do need to try it with a beauty blender. I'm like, is that just marketing to buy, you know, more beauty blender products or does that really make the product apply differently? But I will say the standout for me has got to be the setting spray. So I've used this a few times now. This is one that is not milky at all. You don't have to shake it up. Now it does have a fragrance, which, you know, it's a little bit strong, but it says that it sets your makeup, it plumps your skin, blurs your pores, and reduces shine. What I really like about this is how it melts the powders into my skin. I do use a lot of powder because I get oily and I really can't stand like a sticky feel on my face, but then sometimes I feel like I just look a little bit powdery or dry. This is the perfect spray to really just melt those powders in, but doesn't make me look textured or give that thick, sticky type of feel. A lot of these setting sprays have like glycerin and oils in them, and this one just feels really light. The mister is really nice as well. So I feel like this may be a great kind of like fix plus option for those of you with combo oily skin, but I'm gonna have to test it out in terms of if it really locks your makeup in and all the other claims as I keep using it. But so far this is a standout from the two products that I got from Beauty Blender. Along with the Beauty Blender, I did pick up another setting spray, which is not really like me, but I was reading the reviews on this Cali Ray Surf Proof Setting Spray. Clean, hydrating, and long wear. Okay, woo! Well, I just sprayed that into my eyeball. Good job, Babs. So this is a very light mist. The Beauty Blender is a little bit kind of more like a nice mist, you get it on, you're done. This one's more like Glow Recipe where you probably wanna be really close. This does have a really nice sort of coconut scent. So that's interesting. I just was reading the reviews and so many of the reviews were like, my makeup looked flawless all day. And I was like, what? Don't have to tell me twice. Anything that's going to keep my makeup on perfectly all day, I'm in. So I will continue to test out the Beauty Blender and then we'll try this one as well and I'll give you guys my updated thoughts. But if you've tried either of these, I'd love to know your experience down below. So this next product, I was influenced by the lovely Whitney Simmons, who has raved about this so many times. So I finally grabbed it. This is the Day Prickly Pear Hair Oil. I have to say the packaging is absolutely stunning. And I did get recently the purple shampoo that I do like from this brand. So she has raved about this hair oil for like literally ever. I do think she has more coarse hair that kind of holds a curl, maybe a little bit drier than mine, where mine is really just like fine and limp. But she raved about this, so I grabbed it. I love the packaging, but you guys, this smells absolutely incredible. It really smells like pear deliciousness. And I also like that the oil isn't overly thick. I recently talked about the Sol de Janeiro oil for your hair. It's just so thick. It weighs my hair down and makes it look greasy. This one doesn't do that. I usually just use one pump if my hair is dry or two pumps if it's damp, and it just soaks right in, makes my hair smell amazing, and it doesn't weigh it down. So I'm really glad I picked this up. I just love the vibe. I love the smell. It doesn't weigh my hair down. So shout out to Whitney for this recommendation. Speaking of hair, I almost forgot to mention the biggest purchase I made. I talked about wanting to try this and I went ahead and grabbed it because I did get 20% off. So this is the Shark Flex Style or Flexi Style. This is essentially their dupe or version of the Dyson Airwrap. I have that Airwrap and I love it. But I had been seeing a ton of people on TikTok and Instagram saying that their curls held longer with this. So I definitely wanna test that out. So far I've been using the hair dryer, which is really interesting because you just sort of like twist this around and the hair dryer feels hotter to me than the Dyson. Could be just because this is brand new. My Dyson is a couple years old. Uh, other than that, I'm not noticing a ton of differences. I've been using the barrels just here and there and they work just as well as the Dyson, but I haven't compared them, you know, side by side and see, you know, how long it lasts. I also have this smoothing brush, which I don't typically use because I feel like that's just a lot of heat on my hair. I don't have have issues really with getting it to be straight or non-frizzy, I have more problems with trying to hold a curl. So I will continue to test this out and see if there's a huge enough difference to you know recommend one or the other because I think it's like $2.99 and the Dyson I want to say is like $4.99 or maybe even $5.99 at this point, which is crazy. 
I picked up one mascara in this haul. I actually got a deluxe sample, I believe in one of my earlier orders, and I really liked it, so I grabbed the Fenty Beauty mascara. So the thing with me is I don't struggle with flaking or mascara smudging under my eyes. I think it's because I just use a lot of powder, so really there's just nothing for it to smudge to. So that's something that I really can't give my thoughts on, but I just like how much length and volume this gives me. It has one of those wands that is kind of right in the middle, so it's not super tiny and spiky, but it's also not massive where it's getting all over. And I can just do two coats and get really nice length and volume. I also don't think this is a very wet formula, so it's one of those that you can build up without getting all over. So I've really been enjoying this, and after trying the sample, I was like, you know what, I might as well get it during the sale. I also grabbed a deeper shade in the Tower 28 Cream Bronzer. I got the shade Hammer. So this formula is just super easy to work with. It is just honestly one of the easiest cream bronzers that I've tried. But the one that I got, I think it was like the medium shade, it was just really light and kind of like a, you know, suntan sort of look. But I really wanted something to give me that snatched vibe like my LYS does. So I went ahead and got the shade Hammer and it's just deeper so I feel like it's going to work for me overall. This formula is pigmented but it's not like scary pigmented where you feel like you have to be careful. So I feel like I'll be good with this deep deeper shade to really give me that contour that I'm looking for. I also picked up the new Fenty Skin Hydra Visor Broad Spectrum SPF 15 Sunscreen Hand Cream. Okay, that was a lot to get out. So I love the hand mask from Fenty Skin. It's absolutely incredible if you have dry hands. So when I saw this, I was like, I need this. Now I will say the packaging, it's like really small. You only get 1.35 ounces, which I was kind of shocked by and the reviews on this are pretty rough and I'm kind of like I wonder if it's just the size that people are not thrilled with and it does have a little bit of a white cast it seems to rub in just fine I don't know it has a light scent I would say it's the same or very similar to the hand mask and it doesn't feel bad on my hands. So the only thing I can assume is that people probably are giving it a negative review because it really is tiny. It does almost feel borderline like a travel size. I honestly was just like a hand cream for the day just because my hands are always dry. I'm always wiping bulldog booties, giving them treats, you know, swatching makeup and I can't stand to have my hands feel like dirty, I just overwash them. And so they get super dry and it's like, I just can't get away from it. So I use the Fenty hand mask at night, but I wanted a daytime option. I don't know if I would tell you, you know, go out and grab this just because the price for what you get, but I'll try this out and keep you guys updated. But let me know if you've tried this down below. As per usual, you know I had to pick up some lip products, so I did grab four lip products. They're all different, but let's start off with what I'm wearing right now. Now, strangely enough, I keep getting the dreaded b-hole lips, and it's driving me nuts. It's like where you get that line on the inner rim, and I usually don't have that problem, so I'm not sure if it's the lip liner or this. So this is the Lip Crayon from House Labs. So they came out with some nude shades. So I went ahead and grabbed Blush Matte. This is a really light peachy nude and I love the color. I do really love the peony in this which is like a baby pink. This formula is creamy but thin and it does dry down matte but it's not like going to suck the moisture out of your lips. So I actually really like this but I think maybe this is the culprit that's giving me the line which is the Sephora Collection Gel Lip Liner. I got the shade Dress to the 90s. This is the shade which I love. I will say because this is a gel formula, it's a little bit patchy. Like it looks shiny in certain areas and then it kind of skips in others, which is really not my favorite. I usually just go for a pencil sharpened kind of lip liner. So I like the shade, but I'm wondering if that was giving me the little lines on the corners of my mouth, which I really just don't like. And while I was browsing the Sephora website, I saw that YSL came out with some new shades in their lipstick bombs. So I went ahead and grabbed this pink one. 
It is the color 163. Now this looks scary, but the thing about the YSL bombs is you can kind of shear them out or really build them up. These are super, super hydrating and they really are a lip balm with lipstick pigment. I thought this shade is just so beautiful. To be honest, I was thinking like kind of how I do my popsicle lips just like right in the center to really give me that beautiful pink look. These smell absolutely incredible and they don't slip around. So they're not drying, they're actually super hydrating, but they give you enough color. So if you want something that feels like a balm but has lipstick pigment, this is a great option. And then I did get one lip oil. This is from the uh, In Beauty Lab. I know a lot of people were talking about these recently and I got the color Froze, which is different for me so these smell absolutely amazing like a citrus jolly rancher or something like that they have a really big doe foot and what i thought was interesting about this shade is it has a little bit of like a shimmer to it typically i don't see that or we don't see that in lip oils they're usually just kind of like that sheer jelly type of look so let me go ahead see how it has like a iridescence i'm just you know adding everything now but they feel kind of thick, which I like, and they are shiny, but I wouldn't say that they are as shiny as some other formulas. These feel almost like a lip oil gloss hybrid to me. They're almost reminding me of the Lawless Forget the Filler glosses, but maybe just a little bit thinner in texture. So I really like this. I don't know, there's some other shades that I was eyeing, and I know people have been raving about them, but I definitely want something that has a little bit of pigment. Otherwise, I don't see the point in having, you know, 20 different lip oils. All right, and to finish this haul, I have some restocks. So I went ahead and picked up this from Hourglass. So it's a little bit different, but it's basically their jumbo size of the Vanish Airbrush Primer, which I love. This is pretty huge. It is 1.8 ounces. I'll have to put the price breakdown on the screen, but it is a great value, especially if you get 20% off or, you know, 15, 10% off on top of it. But it is a great value just over overall even if you buy it full price and I'm almost out of my other one I really love it for smoothing and for keeping my oils controlled so when I saw the jumbo I was like I definitely need to buy that I also grabbed another Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless setting spray I go through these this is just my go-to long-lasting setting spray it doesn't make your skin tight or look dry but it really keeps my makeup locked in I also grabbed another Bondi boost flawless flyaway fix. I love this for just taming my baby hairs. It's just really good for areas like this where my hair just doesn't want to cooperate and it drives me crazy. I will say I went through this pretty quickly, but I really love the formula, so I grabbed another one just because honestly getting it 20% off, I was like, you know, why not? Of course, I also restocked my purple shampoo. This is just my ride or die from Olaplex. It is super intense, but I've gone through countless bottles and then I decided to grab this again from Amika. This is the Undone Volume and Matte Texture Spray. So I had this a while ago. This is just really nice if you have fine hair and you're looking for a little bit of like grit that isn't sticky or heavy. So I've used this, gone through a couple of these and I was actually in store and I was like, you know what, let me try that again. And then I had to get my brow pencils. I go through these like water. These are the Huda Beauty Micro Brow Pencils. They really don't last long. And honestly, I need to be better and buy these when Huda is like 50% off. But these are just so nice to do precise brow work. And because I'm not working with a lot of brows, I just really rely on products like this to give me precision. All right guys, so I think that's everything that I picked up during the Sephora sale. I did also do a haul at the beginning of the sale that I can link down below, but let me know what you guys got. What were your favorites? What were some fails that you regret buying? Because I definitely have a few of those. And let me know which products you want me to test in a trying new makeup soon. Hopefully I can get back to doing, you know, two to three videos a week. I do wanna do a chatty get ready with me and sort of uh, give a life update because we have some things happening some are really really good and I'm excited about but 
As always, I will link everything I showed today down below in my description box. Also, the Rakuten sign up will be at the top of my description box. So don't forget to sign up and get that welcome bonus, $40 literally for free. So the information will be at the top of my description box. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.